Welcome to Lines on Design. I'm Debbie Lines here today with Matthew Mullally. Thank you for joining us. You know, we all like to be the center of attention sometimes, and I think even our homes have areas that really like to be the focal point and center of attention. We thought it'd be fun, Matthew, to talk to you today because, first of all, you are an extraordinarily talented artist. You are also, um, you don't just paint, you paint with furniture, and you create Focal points, I guess, is the best way to say it. Mm -hmm. We're here today in Port Royal um, in the penthouse, and it's absolutely glorious. You can see how beautiful it is around us. And we wanted to talk about the kitchen that you did here. This is uh, was an older home, mm -hmm. older kitchen, if you yes. will. And the folks wanted to, the owners wanted to update it. Yes, well, um, the MC was telling me <clears throat> that her husband agreed to ha letting her have new floors, but she couldn't have both. Mm -hmm. But I came in here and said, well, you don't have to get new ones. I can do something to uh, streamline the look of this kitchen. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we, what was disjointed and strange, the way the cabinets were lower from the ceiling and placed in, a, in an odd way that we streamlined. We, we built with thin, thin plywood extensions to the ceiling and then put molding there. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Streamlined the whole, architecturally streamlined, mm -hmm. and then I did a lovely finish over that, like an antique um, Navajo white. Let's, let's talk about the, the entire process. If a client comes to you, uh, and you are the pro, do you have a vision in mind? Do you listen to what they want, to the lifestyle, if they want? that particular area to be a center of attention, or if they want it to fade. How do you go about the process? Well, you know, you can select finishes that are going to definitely be more of a statement, like this combed silver here. It's gorgeous. We used um, on just parts of the kitchen, mm -hmm. just details, and it's kind of had the silver lent itself almost to that industrial chic mm -hmm. uh, yes. aesthetic or vibe. And, um, you know, I just by chance had this sample and Tom, the sweet. owner, looked uh -huh. at it and said he really liked it. And mm -hmm. it, it's an unusual selection for a, a kitchen. But what we did was we used it judicially. We just did the lower portion of the cabinetry okay. in this blue tone. And then the rest of it was this Navajo white. I'm really curious about your background. I know, mm -hmm. gosh, I've known you for a lot of years mm -hmm. now. How has your style or technique evolved? What are you doing now that you weren't? Or what do you find that's a little more fashionable, if you will, well, or the center of attention. As, um, it's almost like, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? Mm -hmm. You know, practice, practice, practice. The more I found myself doing it, the better my technique became, and it evolved. And um, I used to do something that was much more labor intensive and, and, and messy, and with the edges where I would mm -hmm. kind of try to sand, you know, scrape away paint on the edges and give it that old world look. Mm -hmm. But now my technique I call is simply a rub through where I apply the color and as soon as it's applied, it's rubbed through to a darker uh, cocoa colored primer. And it's just lovely and dressier as looking. You, as you were doing this kitchen, yeah. what was the ultimate goal? What was the look you were going for? Is that a fair way of saying it? Um, I just wanted it to be gorgeous, mm -hmm. you know, and I wanted them to come in here when it was finished and say, this is, this is a gorgeous, bespoke, one-of-a-kind kitchen that no one else has. It's very, the home is very eclectic, but very sophisticated. And yet, when I walk into the kitchen, there is a huge element of comfort, too. Mm -hmm. Are those kinds of things, um, I guess, is that something you would put in the equation? Yes, I want it to be sophisticated and yeah. up, well, upscale. But. I'm leaving a piece of myself here too, in, okay. in some strange way, like not to get all metaphysical, but you know, the get metaphysical. The, it's all, the part all. of the part of me that has intent and has mm -hmm. focus and has um, pride mm -hmm. in my work 
stays there. You know, I know that I'm, and, and I know that when people see, uh, that when people are in an environment that's special, they can sense it, they can feel it. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, they're sensing my presence. What I notice is the attention to detail that's really pretty impressive. I was even noticing the hardware that was on the um, mm -hmm. cabinetry, which I thought was fabulous. Mm -hmm. It's lovely, and I know, I think Tom and MC made that selection after mm -hmm. the project was completed. Or it might have been before, and maybe they just turned out to be perfectly suitable once the whole process was finished. Do you strictly do the painting? Do you have, for lack of a better word, sub subcontractors or people that you call in? If, For example, if you want the molding, mm -hmm. is that something that you would actually talk someone through? I have favorite through? people that, I'm, that I've worked with okay. that I, can, I know I can communicate these details to. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're available, sometimes they're not. And th so if they're not available, I'll get a uh, phone number of someone mm -hmm. else and just see if they can understand what needs to be done. What are some of the questions that you ask a client um, when you first enter, let's say, their kitchen, for mm -hmm. example? Well, I could ask them what it is that they don't like about it, Okay. what bothers them. And for example, in this kitchen? and then we'll correct it. Okay. Uh, in this kitchen, they were just uh, prefab cabinets. They were okay. 20 years old. They were, the, the finish was old. It was just white lacquered uh, factory finish. And um, we just spun straw into gold. Okay, that's, oh, okay. beautifully said. We took what said. was there. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, even if they, yeah, we took what was there and we've created a beautiful a kitchen. masterpiece. It's beautiful. Really, it really is. One of the things that I noticed too that was really interesting is is you worked your magic throughout other areas of your of this mm -hmm. home, which I thought were, were was fantastic. I love the fireplace. I'd love to talk about that for a second. And then the bar area, I think, is pretty spectacular mm -hmm. too. Well, what came first? It all started with a table, a, uh -huh. a coffee table they wanted to paint, and then I we we discussed the kitchen, mm -hmm. and then. We added on the bar. Ah. We added on the mantelpiece. Mm -hmm. And we added on, I think, the tabletop that needed to be attended to. Mm -hmm. Not refinished, but I did a, I just painted it. And um, from there, they sent me to Coconut Grove oh, to wow. do their other, other residence. And then they have pet projects they come up with all the time. You but I don't do that type of little pet projects for everybody. everyone. I can't. I mean, I can't make a living that way. But you obviously develop relationships with the folks. Do you, do you feel as though you get a real sense of personality, lifestyle? Definitely. I mean, MC and Tom are very colorful mm -hmm. um, people, vivacious mm -hmm. couple. And it's kind of a breath of... A, a, a fresh air yeah, for you. Yeah, it is. Um, because I like that. Yeah. I mean, I like to see diversity. And I think because they're from Miami, they're from they, they're used to diversity. Right. And they live with they're diversity. They're not afraid of the yeah. color or the yeah. stepping out of the paradigm, yeah. and you if can you kind will. of see it with their selections. How did you get involved in this kind of thing, in this art? Well, art school first, All right. and then um, just working in fancy stores in Soho, like mm -hmm. part-time jobs to make a living in my 20s in furniture. Do you enjoy painting on furniture? Do you enjoy painting on canvas? Are you pretty eclectic with what you like? With my artwork, I'm actually using my own personal artwork. I'm using thin, thin panels of Luan plywood. Okay. Uh, panels because sometimes I'll sand down whole areas as a way to erase parts I don't like. Right. I'll just use a palm sander, mm -hmm. and it also kind of gives a technique that's mysterious. Like, what? How did that? How did he do that? Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, there are just tricks that I have up my sleeve, learning tricks to um, create something that's beautiful and. and and complex. And you know, from a cost effective point of view, is it always something to consider before you, um, I guess to keep a center of attention, we always, many of us think we have to have something new or flashy mm -hmm. or, you know, but what I learned from coming in today to this kitchen, just mm -hmm. looking at the bar and looking at mm -hmm. the mantle, is talk about absolutely beautiful, but didn't have to break the bank. It's pretty impressive what you did. How much? technique goes into this? Well, it's a four-step process. Okay. Yeah. So there's a primer, 
there's uh, a tinted primer, there's the, uh, the color application, which in this case I combed right? with a whisk That's broom. That's what you said, yeah, exactly. Using a whisk broom, and then there's a glaze that it's on top of that. So it's usually a three or four step process. Do you have a favorite um, paint that you use, or do you like one brand over another, or do you think it's pretty much? Well, the primer that I use, I, I'm particular mm -hmm. about that, and okay. that's Benjamin Moore, okay. Paper Tiger. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as the color that I find, oftentimes I'll, I'll even mix together things that I've had to come up with the perfect color, and uh, then have it matched. Do you oftentimes have to talk your clients through the process or talk them through the initial, like, I'm scared, what's it going to look like? I do. If I, if I sense that they have misgivings, I will um, talk to them about certain s the steps involved. And at a certain stage, it might have a look, strange look to you. but uh -huh. Oh, yeah, but let it get finished But first. I ask them to please reserve their judgment until mm -hmm. the final step is done, and then they'll see how it all like even when I was doing this tumbled, faux tumbled marvel up here, uh -huh. MC was like, I don't think that's working. And, I, and she said, I don't know why you're spinning your wheels with that. And then I just kept at it and it's lovely and beautiful. And I think that is something that we all have a tendency to But she came to in and immediately she thought, no. Mm, so but much. she was looking at it in between the steps, yeah. Do you have an inspiration project that you would love to do? I mean, is there something that you're thinking, gosh, if I just had the right venue or the right, the right kitchen, I would love to try this new? Um, I don't have an answer for that. I think that I'm, I look at factory finishes that okay. people can select, that people make selections from when they put in new cabinetry, and I never find anything that I like. As well. I, I don't like them. Mm -hmm. I don't like them. I don't like the way they look. Someone was asking me recently, well, these are the samples a friend of mine in New Jersey putting in a new kitchen. Right. I don't, I like the finishes that Restoration Hardware does. Exactly. Yeah. But, but you were underwhelmed with the rest but, of them. But as far as regular factory finishes and everything's from China, let's not. Yeah, mince let's words. Not, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't find anything that, that is attractive or really makes a statement. Oh my gosh, it's so much fun to talk to you. You're brilliant. And you. we want to have you back a couple of times. We want to actually show you in process, Wendy. I think that would be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more to come here on Lines on Design. Please stay with us. back here on Lines on Design. Our show today is Trash or Treasure. MC has joined us and we are talking about, well, trash or treasure. I don't know. I'm looking around this fabulous house and all I see are treasures. And you keep trying to convince me that some of these pieces are old pieces that you just decided to keep. Talk to me a little bit about the fantastic pieces that we're going to show. I saw your kitchen. It's amazing. I saw the mantelpiece. It's amazing. Matthew did all of this. He painted. I saw the bar. Love it. Talk to me about your coffee table. Well, that was originally what got Matthew here, was I was getting new floors, and I had a brown coffee table, and I went out and looked at other coffee tables. Uh -huh. I could not find anything that I liked, as well as what I had, the size, the shape. And so I said, well, can you do something with it? Because mm -hmm. I didn't want a brown table on a brown floor. I hear you. And he said, oh, I can do that. I can make that look great. <laughs> and he did. It looks fabulous. I love it. You're trying to throw we, things away, and he's like, oh, hell no. We're going to keep these things. You know, and my husband said, well, well, we've got another table in Miami we could bring up. I said, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. no we're not going to trash up the whole place with all kinds of stuff. This actually fits perfectly with couches and the whole configuration of the room. So let's let's work with Matthew on this. And it, I can be happier with it. I tell you, were you surprised at how um, a can of paint and a little imagination can really create magic? I mean, it, the place is amazing. I'm, I just can't tell you how pleased I am with the stuff that Matthew mm -hmm. has done for us. Did you come in with a vision, or would you rely on Matthew to show you different pieces or finishes, or did you just at some point say, go for it? A lot of that. Yeah. A lot of just letting Matthew tell us what to do. I mean, we were in the process of renovating the apartment to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. And I kept thinking, we needed to have these pillars here white, white. 
And Matthew said, no, 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 no. They have to be darker than the, the top part. And so he came up with the color. Yes, he helped save the whole room, actually. I depended on him for a lot. And then Tom wanted to stop the... Tom, your husband. Mm -hmm. Wanted to stop the wood floors near the front door and have some of the tile remain. And I said, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Well, he didn't listen to me on that. But if Matthew said it, right? I'll, oh, yeah. I'll, I'll, <laughs> all right. I, Boy, isn't that? Yeah, the, I guess so. Yeah, isn't you're that right. the truth? And we're talking about how you can take an older piece of furniture, and and even in the kitchen, you put new hardware on that you picked out that I thought just made everything look completely up to date. Yeah, it really looks. I I can be happy with the kitchen. When you were talking about, as I've taken a tour through the house, we're talking about trash or treasure, and we're talking about taking old pieces and really. Um, um, repurposing them and I think t in today's world it's cost effective cost effective makes a lot of sense but I promise you it looks as good if not better than some new pieces you have a fun little piece um, well first I want to talk about the the desk that was an old piece we had we oh. bought that many many years ago I think at uh, well it was Burdines at the uh -huh. time now yeah, it's Macy's. I remember Burdines, yeah. and uh, it was a Pulaski piece and it was quite colorful. It okay. had a beige background. It had like colorful designs on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was, it had seen its day. Mm -hmm. And Tom said, well, why don't we just get a black desk? And I went out and I looked about at black desks. You and found an I antique saw, you saw too, didn't you? Uh-huh. Yeah. And, and he said, well, that looks good. Why don't we get that? And I said, well, wait a minute. That has basically the same lines as what we already have, those kind of French legs. Yes. And we'll let Matthew work on that. Oh, that's so funny. And I left Matthew. We were in Miami when Matthew did it, and we came back, and it was all done, and we just loved it. Well, Tom's so proud of it. When we came in, it was like, you've got to see this. I tell you, it looks like an antique reproduction. It's absolutely beautiful. Were you surprised by it, too? Um, you know what? I really wasn't surprised mm -hmm. because I know Matthew. Mm -hmm. So I know that whatever I give to Matthew to do, it's going to be done beautifully well, and and he's he's done that we sent him to Miami to do our kitchen oh did you really yeah now talk to me about the little home goods piece because I thought that was an adorable piece that you you found cute but not only did he just paint the piece he really used his imagination and he decided to do the inside of it black mm -hmm. so it wasn't just all one color he actually changed changed it so it would be different he actually did that in Miami as well. Oh, did he really? I have lighted cabinets, you know, in the corners of my kitchen with glass doors. Yeah, yeah. He said, oh, you know, that would look so nice if it was silver in there. Mm -hmm. And the color picked up with the, with the lighting. Oh. You would never find that anywhere. No one would ever think to do that. Well, Everybody would have just painted the whole thing exactly. the same color. Not Matthew. He actually thought to do the silver inside and it really does make a big difference. One of the things I noticed when I walked in was technology. There's a lot of cool technology around here, big TVs. And you've got a piece over here that's holding one of the larger TVs that I think is really cool. Now, is that, that's not a Matthew. Is that a Matthew? Only the top is a Matthew because we bought, this Matthew, enormous, we've, we've we bought our brand. enormous yes. television set, <laughs> okay. like a drive-in in here. Right. <laughs> it's very comfortable. Good. We're very comfortable here. But... <laughs> I had this television stand, and I went out. I was going to buy a new stand. Right. Well, you know, they're all kind of ugly. <laughs> I like it. Yep. And um, my husband said, well, why don't we just put a board on top of it? And Matthew kind of I camouflaged the top so that... It doesn't look like a board it on top. It doesn't look like a board. It looks like it all works together, and it's perfect because it really is the right size mm -hmm. for the area. If I put in something larger... Correct. It would be too crowded over there. Well, it's not funny that, for me it's not as crowded. Well, no, it's funny for me as a designer. That was one of the first thing I noticed because it's hard for me to find media centers to put these big TVs oh, on. Oh, and they're so ugly. And I was like, where in the world? And then when you were telling me about it, I'm like, uh huh. So uh, you talk about a treasure. And I like that we branded the Matthew. That was a Matthew. We got yeah, a, that was any a other Matthew. math? Any other the Matthews in there? Ooh, I know one that we didn't talk about before in the kitchen that I absolutely love is I looked up, and again, talking about attention to detail, he's got, it's like a silver yes. banding or that wreath. was a drop ceiling, oh. which were so popular in the 80s. Yes. And what do you do? 
you can't rip out the whole right. ceiling to make it level. And Matthew came up with that whole idea of trimming the inside of the lighting wow. area with the legs on the mm -hmm. post. You know, for me, it's a, a lot of layering in design today. And, and I'm talking about, you know, floors and then rugs or um, actually some of the finishes. There's a lot of layers. There's a lot of visual interest that goes into it. And when I walked into your kitchen, I think that was one of the first things that I noticed is that wherever I looked, it looked very detailed, very finished. Is that something that, that was important to you all too? Oh, absolutely, mm -hmm. yes. And, and Matthew was smart enough to come up with it. I mean, I, I know what I like, uh -huh. but I don't know how to get there. Mm -hmm. And Matthew really helped direct us in the right way. Are you a collector of things? Because I know, I see, you've got two adorable pups that are real, but I also see some really fantastic collectibles in here. We, when we travel, we always like to bring home a piece of wherever we've been. Oh, so, that's cool. You know, those things were, we bought those in Europe and, mm -hmm. and we just brought them home and, you know, and now I have all kinds of that stuff that of course nobody wants. Oh, <laughs> now don't, no, it's that they are treasures. And I think what's fun, and one of the reasons I was excited to talk to you today is again, I think what your home represents here it's got so much personality. I think just, again, from a psychological point of view, I think I could paint a really kind of fun, interesting picture of you with your kids and new grandbabies oh, yes. based on some of the things that you've chosen. And, and again, talk about treasures. Yes. Thank you for joining us. We want to thank, thank all you. of you for joining us here on Lines on Design. It's always fun, but it's especially fun when we can come into someone's home and take a sneak peek into their life. Again, MC, thank you for joining us. Thank you all. It's always a privilege to come into someone's home and really learn a little bit about them. And I think coming into MC's home today, we've learned quite a lot about lifestyle, about personality, about treasures, and what they really look like. Again, thank you very much for joining us. It's always a pleasure to sneak inside someone's house and really see how they live. It has been a pleasure today to talk with Matthew and talk about art and how art is a therapeutic process and really can define someone like you, but also give joy to a lot of people that get to uh, participate in it. For example, the pieces that you've done today, just listening to the owners talk about how now these are these pieces are their center of attention. They feel great. We want to thank all of you for joining us here on Lines on Design. As always, it's a pleasure to have you.